Hey, thanks for tuning in. Um, I so appreciate uh, you joining me. I just want you to know I'm here as a resource for all things creative, all things spiritual, all things human. Um, I'm here for you. I'd love to get feedback to hear what you want to talk about. There, There's so much, but today I'm really going to be all over the place again. I feel like I always say that, but there are a lot of thoughts. First of all, I just recently finished a commission and uh, delivered it to my clients. So I am coming back to this tree, which you may or may not know what it is. I, it's another commission um, for a copper tree. So I do um, copper trees sewn onto canvas. And typically there is, I start with a papered collage layer. This is for a dear friend of mine, Holly which Holly, you're probably watching at some point. So I part of this was because I wanted to let you in on the process. I know that you're um, so process oriented that I wanted you to kind of peek in on the process of your painting that your sweet friend Haley um, put together for you. So this is actually a very different sort of tree that I'm doing this time. I'd never heard of it before this, but it's called a Mexican sunflower, and it typically isn't a tree, but Holly's tree has flourished in her backyard so much so that it's actually a tree. So I'm going to do some sort of a hybrid between a tree and what a Mexican sunflower typically is, which is a large flower, wildflower. But So we're gonna kinda turn it into a tree. But as you can see here, my dear friend Holly wrote a book called Whispers of Mercy, journaling the voice of Jesus. So she uh, leads us through this beautiful process of writing down your questions, scripture that you might be looking at, and listening back for what you hear. And I suggest doing her book um, in your solitude moments, in your moments of silence, where you can kind of clear out the clutter, clear everything away, and just listen for the voice of God. And, and she encourages you to write down what you hear, and I encourage that too. So the first paper layer down here are from pages of her book and poignant pages of her book. Like there's, um, if you saw close up, you can really, if you take time to investigate it, you can kind of see um, some of the phrases and um, words that pop out that I've chosen to keep forward and not completely cover over with paint. But I need to go back in. This is such a dark background and I'm putting darker colors in. So I really want to lighten it up a little bit. So I've got my painting palette here. It's actually a little bit left over from my last painting. So I'm, it's a good way to kind of recycle those lighter colors. And no, this is not a paintbrush. This is a brayer. Um, printmakers use this is a great tool for painting and this is a I don't know what do you call this I don't know a wedge I guess it says a wedge right here it's a wedge anyway I love the texture it creates on the surface so I'm just gonna take a little bit of this is like um really white with just a little bit of um, cadmium yellow mixed in and maybe I put a little tad bit of blue in there to cool it down a little bit and I just want to, I'm just going to put some, put some lighter on this. Okay, so while I'm talking, I just thought I'd have you in the studio with me today as I'm starting back in on this project that means so much to me um, and talk about some things that have been really important to me lately. Um, a dear friend of Holly and I, her name is Kristen, um, she's become so dear to me, we've been texting back and forth and we were texting earlier this week and um, she helped me realize some things that I was we were both reading the Richard we get the Richard Rohr uh, daily meditations which if you don't have you can go and sign up uh, just Google Richard Rohr he's a Franciscan priest if you Google his name um, the Center for Action and Contemplation in Albuquerque New Mexico should come up and you can sign up for his daily meditations. For the most part, they are just beautiful ideas. And so this week he's been looking at this idea of the third way, which I've always been intrigued by that idea. 
that the world isn't black and white. It's actually very colorful. And so when we try to box it and contain it into our sort of categories and structure, rule structures and all of that, it kind of breaks down after a while because life isn't black and white. It's more lived in color if we're truthful and we're honest about how life is. It's just not black and white. It's, it's a lot more complicated and a lot more messy than black and white and a lot more beautiful. So we're talking about the third way. So there's a writer that's been involved, I can't remember her name, but um, Richard Rohr has referred to her this week looking at the third way. She describes it as uh, the black and white way, the first two ways as um, affirming and denying and the third way being um, reconciling. So rather than these, this either or way of looking at the world and looking at life, this either I affirm this or I deny this and then everything kind of comes down in this black and white containment system. She's saying the third way means uh, reconciliation, um, holding the tension of the opposites and not necessarily even trying to find a resolution for these contentious opposites. Sometimes they can be very contentious and sometimes they they create this third thing that I think is where t real, true life really is and where beauty comes from. So I love this language and I realized as I was talking to my friend Kristen that I've always been drawn to this kind of language and in fact I wrote an artist statement and um, really explored this idea toward the end of my degree. So this was when this was back in 2013, like spring of 2013. I was looking at these ideas, and as I began to write my artist statement, okay, so here's what I wrote. Um, this is part of my artist statement. I'm reading it from the screen behind you, so forgive me as I look away, but um, I write, as a painter, I perceive that there are many relationships active in a good piece of work, such as light and dark, Smooth and rough, colorful, dull, space and illusion of space, abstract and concrete. These relationships exist to portray contrasts and diversity. This could be said of life as well. And it is in these relationships, perhaps, that we find those transitory, beautiful spaces in which the dichotomy of contentious opposites are found flourishing peacefully, inhabiting a minute corner of the world for a for a transient instant. So even back then, I was fascinated by this tension of the opposites. I was studying the guy, um, oh, I'm gonna forget his name now, Piet Mondrian, a German post-war painter, and I was reading about him, and there was a story told where he would sit in a restaurant and request that he sit in the the table that looked away from the window. He did not want to look outside because he was so undone by the tension in nature. He hated nature. So his actually his early work was absolutely beautiful. These organic trees. I mean, it was very nature. It was wild. His appearance was wild even. It was, you know, he was like not clean shaven, wild hair, um, just, you know, your typical artist stereotype. And then later in other photographs, you see this transition. You see this transition in his art. You see it in his even physical appearance. He becomes this, he wears clean, sterile clothing, clean shaven, um, short boxed off hair, just clean, clinical. Um, and his work, he decided his his thing and his work was that he wanted to remove the tension of the opposites through the formal quality of his work. So his formality and his paintings were very geometrical, very squared off. There were only five colors in his color palette, black, white, primary red, primary blue, and primary yellow, okay? So he went from these beautiful, curvilinear, organic, rooty, um, raw trees to this 
between clean lines, very limited color palette, his attempt to remove any tension. And honestly, I loved his earlier work that showed the tension of the opposites, that they could live harmoniously in spaces um, together. So I'm just looking at that and looking at life and realizing that's what I've been trying to do in my art. And that's what life is about in this third way. I'm so intrigued by this third way. And I hope you are too. And uh, we'll talk more about this. I've run out of time, but we'll talk more about it later. Thanks for watching. Yeah.